Um, it might be why I internalized so many of my emotions growing up is that I never was very, um, I wasn't in a family that was very demonstrative. Is that the right word? So yeah, I don't know. Maybe it, <laughs> I should go talk to a therapist afterwards and see if I can figure it out. <laughs> First of all, I want to start by saying that thank you for this movie. It's captivating and profound and heartbreaking, but at the same time, extremely funny. So how do you find balance between telling a story that feels personal to you as a filmmaker and one that resonates on a broader, more universal scale? Oh, I, I, I always strive for balance. Um, and these films take a great long time to make, you know, years, because animation, that's just the nature of, of what we do. Um, I write a script, but then it goes through a lot of changes. And everybody who I come in contact with uh, is, very, um, is very additive. And I always want people to be uh, comfortable disagreeing with things and giving me notes. And um, the, the movie gets stronger because of it. And uh, we definitely move things around and, and, and find that balance. So I credit, I credit the process and every artist that is involved. Yeah, that's amazing. I can see the collab collaborative work here. So um, in the movie, Ross experiences a profound shift from being an outsider in the wild to becoming an integral part of it. Do you find parallels between Ross's story and your own moments of adaptation or growth, either as a filmmaker or in your personal life? Oh yeah, I think it's inevitable that you're um, you're referencing things, maybe even unconsciously sometimes. Um, you know, this actually the, the, these these interviews have 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 raised interesting questions and made me reflect on different things. You know, while you're making the movie, you're just so busy doing it, you just react and you and you know you're you're digging down deep to find things. But um, one of the things I've had to think about is like, well, in my own family, like nobody was very open and, and demonstrative we were <laughs> nobody like we weren't big huggers and we didn't like say I love you to each other and stuff like that I think everybody in my family was kind of how do you what is, what is that problem how would you describe that anyway um, it might be why I internalized so many of my emotions growing up is that I never was very um, I wasn't in a family that was very demonstrative is that the right word so yeah, I don't know maybe it, <laughs> I should go talk to a therapist afterwards and see if I can figure it out um, <laughs> But do you think like this movie has helped you in some way, like, for example, in what you're telling me to be more demonstrative or whatever, or it's just, you know, I'll, I'll say that um, there's there's a certain moment in the film where Brightville is about to leave for this migration. And it was something that was very um, critical timing wise, because uh, he, as you know, he and Roz have had a uh, breakdown in the relationship. Any film about a relationship, any story about a relationship, inevitably there's a moment where that relationship breaks down. And the idea is then to put it back together and make it even stronger. And that's what's going on here. So at the moment where they are, they, it has already broken down, and at the moment where I think Brightville might want to attempt to try to, to try to fix it, he waited too long. He's run out of time and he has to leave for this migration. It's one of my favorite moments in the film, timing-wise. So in a sense, the train is leaving the station and he has to be on it. So he's run out of time. And that, that missed opportunity, um, it's very deliberate, of course, in the story. It, um, it's an energy source within the movie. And uh, you're now waiting to see if they ever will get a chance to talk to each other. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, and that's something I've, I've, de I've definitely waited too long to say things and regretted it in my life. <laughs> Wow, that, thank you for sharing. So for my last question, I just wanted to know if you could give voice to any of the characters of the Wild Robot, who would you choose and why? I, I think my favorite is Fink. I, okay. There's no question, there's no question. that He's just a personal favorite. Um, I, like his, I like his voice, his design, I like his character, yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> thank you so much, Chris. Thank you for oh, your time. Thank you.